day ladies and gentlemen in today's video I would like to read the transcript of a conference held in 1969 tell me what you think in the comment section please let's begin shall we quote tapes one and two are reminiscences by Dr. Lawrence Dunigan of a speech given on March 20th 1969 by Dr. Richard Day medical director of Planned Parenthood who addressed an assembly of physicians in Pittsburgh Pennsylvania in a two-hour presentation, he revealed the long-range plan for a new world system to prepare them for changes to come. The moderator for these tapes is Randy Engel, National Director, U.S. Coalition for Life. Stop. I will skip the formalities and start at the good stuff. Quote, this, now this is Dr. Dunigan speaking. Quote, the speaker said that his purpose was to tell us about changes that would be brought about in the next 30 years or so, so that an entirely new worldwide system would be in operation before the turn of the century. As he put it, uh, we plan to end the 21st century with a running start. Stop. This is not the first nor second time we have heard of the evildoers planning 30 years ahead. What's so special about 30 years, you ask? According to Wikipedia, under how long is a generation? Now, understand, they're not talking biblical. Quote, the average age of mothers at birth of their first child is 20, and at the last birth, 31, giving a mean of 25.5 years per female generation. Husbands were 6 to 13 years older given a male generation interval of 31 to 38 years. Which can only mean the evildoers want to infect an entire generation and for the young mothers of that generation to infect their seed until the state takes over when they are old enough to go to school and learn the next wave of wicked influence. But let's continue. Quote, he said as we listened to what he was about to present, he said, some of you will think I'm talking about communism. Well, what I'm talking about is much bigger than communism. Stop. Please remember to listen to this information with a 1969 mindset. When you do, this comment makes complete sense. Why? because this was the era when a huge chunk of white America and roughly 70% of blacks considered themselves communists. Heck, even MLK was a communist. The 60s and early 70s was a whirlwind of world-defining change, people. But let's continue. Quote, in his introductionary remarks, <laughs> introductionary remarks, I think I said that right. He commented that uh, he was free to speak at this time. He would have not been able to say what he was about to say even a few years earlier. But he was free to speak at this time. Because now, and I am quoting here, everything is in place and no one can stop us now. That's the end of that quotation. His purpose is in telling our group about these changes that were to be brought about uh, was to make it easier for us to adapt to these changes. Indeed, as he quite accurately said, there would be changes that uh, would be very surprising and in some ways difficult for some people to accept. And he hoped that uh, we, as sort of his friends, would uh, make the adaptation more easily if we knew somewhat beforehand what, uh, what to expect. Stop. Anyone that has been in any level of management, in any type of business, have been privy to these type of meetings. So this type of candor shouldn't be a shock to you. Let's continue. I'm going to skip him talking about how he tried to remember as much as he could and piece it together 
with what was happening in the world throughout the following decade. Quote, one of the statements was having to do with change. The statement was, people will have to get used to the idea of change. So used to change that they will be expecting change. Nothing will be permanent. Change is to be brought about. Change was to be anticipated and expected and accepted. No questions asked. Stop. And this is exactly the mindset of the day. Prime example. Apple can put out the exact same phone with an adjustment here or an app there 982 times in one year. You want another example? We went from a gay curious nation to a full-blown flamer in just eight years. Think about it. We went from albums to reel to reel to eight tracks to cassette tapes to CDs to streaming in only 35 years. Think about it for just a business minute. For just a minute. America's, thus the world's, entire business model is predicated on change. Status quo is a dirty little word no business person want to hear. Those two words in a satanic capitalistic market will destroy that same satanic capitalistic market. Quickly at that, we got to have change, people. The next revolutionary invention right around the corner. But let's continue, shall we? Quote, another comment that was made uh, from time to time during the presentation was, people are too trusty. People don't ask the right questions. Sometimes being too trusting was equated to being too dumb. But sometimes when, when he would say that people don't ask the right questions, it was almost with a sense of regret, as if he was uneasy with uh, he was a, what he was a part of and wish people would challenge it, uh, not be so trusting. Stop. What? Not trust everything the white man says? Ah, oh, he's a hack. He's incredible. I'm sorry for even wasting y'all time, people. Man, not trusting everything the white man says. Man, get out of here. But since you guys have already hit the green button, I guess I can continue. Quote, another comment that was repeated from time to time, this in particular relations to changing laws and customs, uh, specific changes, he said, Everything has two purposes. One is the sustainable purpose, which will make it acceptable to the people. And second is the real purpose, uh, which would further the goals of establishing the new system. Stop. Is this not the Luciferian way? And because mankind has become status driven and superficial in their thought process, the evildoer sorceries have induced you into a heightened frenzy for the next big thing. You know, so you won't have to take a bunch of selfies and post them with the caption, BORED. You willingly accept the path of least resistance to giving into your personal wants and desires to invoke wisdom and understanding to know Whatever it is, if it was not sanctioned by Yah and given to the prophets of Israel to write down, it is a trap and a snare unto you, Israel. Notice I said Israel and not everyone. I said it like that because to the race of Israel only was wisdom and understanding bestowed. Everyone else, they just smiled. Let me get down off of my soapbox so we continue. But I warn you now, 
I will climb right back up there in the next video with a bullhorn at that. But let's continue. Quote. And huh, he says something. I couldn't understand it. And huh, frequently he would say, there's no other way. There's just no other way. This seems to come as a sort of an apology, uh, particularly when at the conclusion of describing some particularly offensive change. Stop. Interesting. Interesting indeed. Remember the video when we discovered businessmen and scientists alike were taking the drug DMT to go on the other side? You remember. They even called the drug the spirit molecule and the businessman's lunch. You still don't remember? Where most, if not all, the leading scientists in their fields have admitted to taking mind-altering drugs to come up with their theories and inventions? One of the new drugs is called DMT. In the published and vetted study, they said half of the large participating pool will go on the other side and there would be things, for the lack of a better word, waiting for them. Sometimes they were extremely friendly and sometimes they weren't. They were given unprecedented information in their fields of work. When the participants were told they were only experiencing hallucinations, they refused to believe to believe it, saying it was too real to have been a hallucination. Now here's my personal belief. Since half of the participants had normal hallucinations, and a whopping half actually went on the other side, I believe the half that went on the other side were the tear that walk amongst us today. The firewall y'all put in place between the spiritual and physical in his week isn't present in the evil door tear. Thus, the reason they are able to suppress what we would call a conscience when applicable. And in this case, go meet their daddies. But that's just my personal thought. I didn't mean nothing by it. Let's continue with the interview, shall we? Listen up. Quote. Another area of discussion was religion. Uh, this is an avowed atheist speaking, and he said, Religion is not necessarily bad. A lot of people seem to need religion with its mysteries and rituals, so they will have religion. But the major religions of today will have to be changed because they are not compatible with the changes to come. The old religions will have to go, especially Christianity. Then a new religion can be accepted for use for all over the world. It will incorporate something from all of the old ones to make it more easy for people to accept it and feel at home in it. Most people won't be too concerned with religion, they will realize that they don't need it. I'm going to say that again. Most people won't be too concerned with religion. They will realize they don't need it. Stop. Is this not the millennial mindset of today? Yes. Yes, it is. Have we not seen and exposed the hard push to amalgamate the religions, including pagans? Yes, yes we have. And I am not just talking about the coexisting crap either. Am I the only person to notice the rise in Chris Lamb lately? But wait, Miss Penny and the other lone voice in the wilderness, for your Sabbath best wishes really do mean a lot to me. Check this out. Quote, in order, to, in order to do this, the Bible will be changed. 
it will be rewritten to fit the new religion. Gradually, key words will be replaced with new words having various shades of meaning. Then they, meaning attach the new word, uh, can be close to the old word. And as time goes by, other shades of meanings of that word can be emphasized and then gradually that word replaced with another. Everything in scripture may not be rewritten, just key words replaced by other words. And uh, the ver variability in meanings attached to any word can be used as a tool to change the entire meaning of scripture and therefore make it acceptable to this new religion. Most people won't know the difference. And this is one of the times where he said, this is what he said, the few who do notice the difference won't be enough to matter. Then followed the most surprising statement of the whole presentation. He said, some of you probably think the church won't stand for this. Then he went on to say, the churches will help us. And in retrospect, I think uh, some of us now can understand what he might have meant at the time. Example. So as you can see, ladies and gentlemen, we are deep in the evildoers matrix of deception just like the scriptures say we would thank you for looking at this video Yaz will look for my theory on the entire mandela effect next